Hello and welcome to the Monday afternoon uh, weekly webinar uh, with us here at CMC Markets. A uh, quick, quick rundown of uh, the main events. Today's date is Monday the 23rd of October. The time is just gone 12.15 in the afternoon. And we'll proceed now with the weekly webinar. Uh, and as always, I'll just uh, leave the risk warnings on the screen here for you guys to have a read through uh, and to ensure that our, my compliance department uh, will, be, will be happy. Uh, it essentially states uh, that any of uh, the material that we cover <coughs> or topics I discuss uh, are not to be construed as an investment uh, or trading advice, just purely commentary uh, on what's going on, on on the markets, and it shouldn't be construed as, as explicit instructions. It's just a, a kind of an exchange of ideas, if you will. Um, and always, uh, you have the chat box there in front of you. Um, I'm going to cover the main markets, indices, currencies, commodities, discuss the major events of the week. And if there's any markets that I haven't covered, uh, just feel to just type in the chat box, say, David, would you mind having a look at this? And I will happily oblige. And there we go. We have the risk warnings out of the way now, so we can proceed with the actual webinar itself. Um, so, as always, what we'll do is take a quick look uh, at what's been going on in the markets. Quiet enough start uh, to the session in, in Europe. Uh, volatility, largely speaking, of, of the last few days uh, in the main European markets has been fairly quiet. Um, you know, we're still north of 13,000 on, on, on the DAX, uh, and we're still, the, the FTSE can't really seem to get beyond. 7,560. Uh, but um, it's, equity markets on some of the major ones have been standing have been pretty quiet the last number of last number of trading sessions. Uh, but obviously the situation in Catalonia is, is, is still ongoing. The Madrid government are in the process of uh, stripping the autonomous region of its powers. And we have even though we've had no kind of um, we've, we've no actual procedure in that they're going to be vote the Spanish government are going to be voting that uh, on Thursday we could see some sort of a reaction uh, this week so if we are trading the IBEX which we will look at uh, in, in a few minutes time that's obviously going to be a big one to keep an eye out for in terms of the kind of major events to kind of keep an eye out on and watch out for over the week uh, if you go to our news and analysis section on our website and then on the under the filter by click on weekly outlook Every week we also produce a weekly outlook which gives a breakdown of the major both corporate and economic stories of the week that's ahead of us. So we got an update here on Wednesday from the Bank of Canada. Uh, and we got, so we got an up, up, up on Wednesday for, to the back half of the week, Wednesday through Friday. We have a number of UK banks uh, that have their numbers out. Lloyds on Wednesday, Barclays on Thursday, Royal Bank of Scotland on Friday. Uh, what we also have is we have... Um, we have the numbers out from Amazon coming out on Thursday, uh, as we, we have uh, uh, as well as we, as we do Alphabet, and also taking a look, um, we also have some uh, economic indicators coming out of the U.S. Uh, economy on Friday. Uh, taking a kind of a scroll through now, I already mentioned a couple of stocks that are reporting this week, uh, but, but uh, later uh, there's a few other companies that are worth mentioning as well. 3M in the United States have numbers out tomorrow and Tuesday, as do Caterpillar. Caterpillar often seen as a, kind of a, a bellwether for the actual, for the kind of heavy, for, for kind of heavy industry. It often gives you a gauge of what the construction or, or the mining sector is doing. General Motors are also out on Tuesday. Uh, Lockheed Martin, the defense company, McDonald's, um, the, the fast food chain on Tuesday. Uh, turning our attention now to Wednesday, we've got numbers out from Boeing. Coca-Cola, Freeport, McMoran, uh, they are a mining company. GlaxoSmithKline in the UK, our third board numbers out. As I mentioned, Lloyd's. Uh, we also have an update uh, from Visa uh, on, on Wednesday from the US. Alphabet, Alphabet, as I mentioned already, they're the owner of they're the parent company of Google. We also have, have, have Amazon's third board numbers out. Barclays, uh, American Airlines Group, we have CME Group, the, the futures exchange. Ford Motor Car have numbers out on Thursday. Uh, Intel have numbers out on, on Thursday. Scroll down, it's quite a long list here uh, of, uh, of companies which are reporting on Thursday. We've updated from, uh, from Santander and also uh, from from Twitter on Thursday. Uh, on Friday, a bit quieter, International Consolidated Airlines. 
uh, and also Royal Bank of Scotland. Take a look now at what's been going on uh, on some of the major markets. Let me look now at the FTSE 100. It's been basically, it's, it's had a big push back since September. Uh, went up to back up towards the, the retested the August highs and we're kind of in around that area again. <clears throat> so given that we're still, given that we're, we're only probably say about 60 odd points shy of the all time high in the FTSE 100, uh, I would say that, that the overall outlook is still bullish. This move here, this kind of powerful push up here from kind of mid September, has only given back a small bit, bit of its gains. Uh, it, it would appear that traders are kind of catching their breath, as it were. The bulls are kind of, uh, are, by the looks of it, taking a bit of a break and has been very much range bound, tight enough range in around here from around 7,500 at the downside up to 7,561, kind of 60, that, that sort of price area. So, a 60 point range. Uh, for the last few weeks. Uh, one of the indicators that I like to look at is the MACD indicator. And, it, and, and if you notice, as the market was pushing higher, it swung out of negative momentum, and then all of a sudden it had a very much increase in positive momentum. And since the, kind of, uh, the first week or 10 days of the, uh, the month, positive momentum has been completely declining. Not to say that that's kind of guaranteed to swing into negative momentum, but, it, but, we, but that is just something to, uh, to keep an eye out for, especially when... The market hasn't really kind of made any additional ground. It could be a sign that the kind of buyers are kind of running out of steam. So, if we, but if we do break north of uh, this area here, seven thousand five hundred sixty-one, which is kind of one of the high, one of the kind of lower highs from June, we could then be uh, targeting the all-time high of just shy of six thousand seven thousand six hundred at seven thousand five hundred ninety-nine. Uh, but if, if we do see most of the downside, we could expect to find some support in around this price here under this. Uh, this uh, uh, candle here from, from Thursday, 7,484, and then potentially back down towards 7,461. As I mentioned, any, any markets that, I, um, that you want me to cover, just feel free to shout out, but I will be covering, <coughs> apologies, I will be covering the major markets. Not too dissimilar on the Germany 30 on the DAX, I said a major push higher in, in, in September. Uh, we not uh, achieved record highs uh, only, la only last week, and ever since then, the last few trading sessions have been fairly quiet, very much range bound, kind of in around 13,000 to 13,095, very much kind of range bound. But given that we're in, within within uh, easy, easy eyesight of the record high, the upper, this upper trend here is still very much uh, in, in place. It is slightly concerning though that all the kind of positive momentum here. I slipped away and it's now swung to negative momentum, but it's only barely in negative momentum territory. Uh, the, the price is, is, is still key. Uh, so if you do happen to break north, and if you do create an, a fresh all-time high at 13,095, 96, should we go beyond that? Should we be looking towards uh, big, big psychological numbers, 13,200 and 300 and, and, and so on. But if we do happen to actually uh, to get, get, a, get a pullback, we could pull back into this area here in around 12,893, or then south of that, this price here, in around 12,847. I'll have a look now at the at the, uh, the Spanish market, the IBEX, because it's been uh, probably the most interesting market uh, news-wise the last few weeks. Uh, but even but even before the Catalan situation kicked off uh, about three weeks ago, it's worth pointing out that the Spanish market, the IBEX, has been in decline since May. Anyway, it's after hitting an all-time high, it's been slowly giving up all the, all these all these gains here. And notice how uh, the the 50-day moving average, this line here, uh, has acted as a fairly decent uh, level of resistance. And since seeing as it has previous experience acting against resistance, and then you know, not to say that it would guarantee that resistance again in the future, but it just makes it more likely. And I suspect while while the uh, while the IBEX remains south of the 50-day moving average, the, the outlook for the market is going to remain negative. And that comes into play in around 10,290-odd. Um, and if we do kind of push, push lower on the on the IBEX 35, we could be looking, at, or we could be looking uh, for support at 10,087. And then south of that, uh, down to the low in early October, uh, at 10, at 9,866 in around both, both those areas we we'll keep an eye on to the downside. But if you do happen to kind of break north, a, a sizable break as well, north of the, of the 50 day moving average, not just a small kind of piercing of the level, 
We could target the kind of mid-August high of 10,445, and then beyond that, 10,576. And then, of course, north of that again, the August high will be the one to watch out for at 10,758. US markets in quite decent shape in comparison to their European counterparts. Wrong chart. Um, this is just, the market just keeps on going and going, doesn't it? Uh, it's very much kind of groundhog day, fresh record highs. The market is in almost a classic example of a textbook uh, positive trend, just keeps on creeping higher. If anything, they're going to uh, all I can really kind of say about this market, it's unusual. We haven't seen any kind of really kind of pullbacks. Um, it's been very, it's it's been very much uh, just kind of pushing higher, almost like kind of a at a forty five degree line the next few last few months. As the market is pushing higher, you can see there's been a no, there's a, a visual visual increase in positive momentum. So you can so you can actually be more confident uh, that the move is going to continue because as the the price is pushing higher, that's also kind of confirmed by the increase in positive momentum. So the buyers are, are still kind of uh, gaining momentum um, and, 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 uh, and the buying appetite is still increasing. So, so the outlook for the, uh, for the US 30 for, for the Dow Jones is, remains positive. If we do happen to see a pullback, we could pull back into this price area here in, in around the, the level of uh, 23,070 or then south of that at 23,000 itself. But it depends on strategy what you want to do. Some players that like to kind of wait for a pullback, others that like to uh, like to be a bit more aggressive and enter the market now. But bearing in mind, if you are waiting for a pullback, that pullback may never come because you, as you can see here, we haven't really kind of haven't really backtracked whatsoever. But obviously, if you do enter the market straight in uh, at, rather than waiting for a pullback, there's obviously a bit more risk attached to that itself. Uh, the S and P 500, not too dissimilar again, chart wise. Um, I'll just pull up the levels now. Similar deal as well. Uh, the market is just kind of ratcheting up um, fresh record highs, kind of session after session, very much kind of groundhog day. Um, so the, the, the bullish trend is still very much very much in, in place. Um, the one thing I can say is that we are uh, in that, that what this set this if you're looking back at, at Thursday's candle here and that, that sell off. It, probably, it possibly wasn't an entire surprise because as the market was pushing higher here, we noticed that positive momentum is actually noticeably declining. So the market was telling us that even though the market was eking out fresh record highs, the rate at which the buying momentum was increasing was slowing down. So that would, would, be, would be a bit of an indication. It's called diversions but when, the, when the two are kind of going in the opposite direction. And that, that, that could have been a bit of a, a, a foreshadow of that. We were going to see a bit of a push lower, and lo and behold, we did. So it would have been an opportunity to potentially kind of buy the pullback in there. But now that we're seeing markets pushed higher, momentum is ticking up again. So we could we could potentially infer another round of the market moving higher for another few days in a row. Uh, similar deal, looking to the upside, traders looking out for big psychological number of uh, 2,600. If we do see a pullback, we could see you know looking at at, the, at this price here. Friday's high uh, at 2,576, or then or the bottom end of that range would be 2,561. So these areas, if we do see a pullback, these are the sorts of areas we could see, or even back down towards Thursday's low at 2,544. But either way, it's, it's still looking to be a quite a positive, uh, we can expect, but probably expect a positive move for the, uh, for the S&P 500. While traders are in risk on mode, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a turn lower in gold. Um, that's uh, the, the, red, the, the, the fairly strong U, U.S. dollar is uh, is keeping gold, keeping the uh, the move in, in gold curtailed. Um, also, what we're, what we're seeing as well is the uh, as, as I mentioned, the very much risk on attitude. Uh, traders are expecting um, Donald Trump's tax proposals to be introduced. That's pushing up the U.S. dollar. It's also pushing up the value of the U.S. stock market, and in turn. Traders are are are, uh, are still keeping an eye on the December uh, for a rate hike from the Federal Reserve. Uh, they're still reasonably confident that we're going to see a rate hike from from the, from the U.S. Central Bank. And there's obviously an inverse relationship between um, U.S. interest rates and the price of gold. So, as 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 we saw here on the uh, on the price of gold, it has been kind of cooling the last number of sessions. 
positive momentum as as uh, as, as turned actually negative now. It, it's actually swung around, but we can see here that it uh, is getting a bit of support from the 100-day moving average, and that comes into play in around the price we're currently at, in around 12,075. So it's acted at support in the last few days. So if we do manage to hang out the 1275, we could potentially see, uh, you know, an, another another uh, another go up towards the 1300 level, and then the next level beyond that will be 1306, uh, the, the high of October. But but given that the market has been kind of pushing lower since September, it's kind of appears to have potentially turned over on itself here. If we do happen to drop back below the 50, the 100-day moving average. In this price here at 1275, we could then be looking back towards the Oct October low at this level here in around the 1260, and then south of that, you know, very very much under the 1260 is the 50 is the 200 day moving average, which would be kind of deemed to be quite an important barometer of the market. And if we do if we do drop below the 200 day moving average, we could then be looking back down towards. 1230 1220, or back down towards the July low of 1204. Having a look now at the oil market. Oil not too too dissimilar to some of the European equity markets in that it's been trading in a relatively tight range the last few sessions. And even though after hitting after going out to have quite a decent uh, move move in September, given back some of those gains in October, but but at the same time it looks like it's sort of kind of indecisive. And that's why we're seeing kind of swing between positive and negative momentum. There isn't, it's almost like the market is kind of indecisive which way it's going. Uh, I would suggest seeing as the kind of wider, the wider um, positive move that's been in place since June is still very much intact. I would, I would suggest we could see a continuation. Uh, I would suggest that we, uh, we, we could see a continuation of the kind of wider upward move that's been in place. But uh, it, it, what, what you could potentially do is you may want it might be interesting to see if it can actually take off this level here first of all at uh, 58 dollars and 68 cents if it takes out this area here because that's sort of been a, a bit of a cap recently a bit of active resistance if you go north of that then we could be looking towards let's say september high you know, 59 dollars and 51 cents and then if you go beyond that the big psychological 60 dollars a bar will then, will then come into play but any kind of moves lower in the uh, in, in the in the price of oil. If we if you take off the October low here um, at fifty five dollars and thirty cents, that could be a sign that you know the upward move that's been in place for a number of months is coming to an end. So, but even if you do see a pullback to this price area here, in around the kind of fifty six region, we could see some kind of more buyers enter the fold, seeing as the kind of wider trend has been positive for the last few months. It's only a move south of the. Uh, the October low at um, 55.30, then we could potentially see a move back towards the kind of 54 region. Looking now at the price of WTI. Same situation, but not as uh, not as kind of overtly kind of bullish. The wider kind of positive move that's been in place in June is still very much intact. We're not kind of create higher highs. hasn't man hasn't really kind of had, had the kind of energy to uh, to to take on the September high here. It kind of ran out of steam on a couple of occasions, but by and large, it's pulled back all the kind of all the after hitting a multi-month high in September. It had, had a bit of a sell-off, bounced off the kind of about, well south just ever so slightly south of the 20 moving average and bounced off of the 50 day moving average. So that's that's going to be that's going to be a level to keep out for. Should he move lower? But seeing as we're only you know not not too, only less than um than about sixty cents away from this September high, which was of course a multi-month high, you know the outlook is uh, is still fairly decent for the price of WTI. So first level to watch out for to the upside is going to be the September high at fifty-two dollars and fifty-three cents, and then beyond that we're looking towards the April high here at fifty-three dollars and fifty-six cents. And if that happens to take taken out, we're looking back to the beginning of the year, back in February. Back towards that, that the February high of fifty four dollars and sixty three cents. But and as I mentioned, as the, the fifth day moving average acts as a bit of support here in early October, we could potentially see it acting as, as a as a support level again should we move south. So if we do move south, obviously kind of fifty fifty bucks is going to be kind of psychological number to keep out keep an eye out for. And then below that, the fifth day moving average comes into play 
at around $49.43. And it just, and it just so happens that the, the Trinity moving average isn't too far below that either at $49.18. So these are levels that we, if we do see a bit of a push lower in the price of WDI, these are potential levels we might see some buyers enter the fold because, as I mentioned, the trend that's been in place since June is still intact. Uh, taking a look now at our currencies, we'll have a scan over uh, a few of the big currency pairs. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, this is any markets that I haven't covered and you want me to cover, just shout out and I'll be happy, happy to do it. Um, obviously, what's going on with, with, with what's going on with both um, Catalan question, the situation in in Italy, uh, we, we had a couple of non-legally binding regional referendums uh, in, in Lombardy and Vento uh, um, over the weekend. Both regions in, in northern Italy, um, in a non-binding, non legally binding referendum, voted for uh, more powers to their to to the uh, more powers to their local administration, and it just sets off uh, an image that. Um, there's not like a because not only is there a political division within Europe, there's, there's there's political division within countries that are members of the of the uh, of the eurozone, and this is obviously sort of, obviously obviously a big issue. Um, combine that with the fact that the US dollar has had a good run recently. There's a lot of there's, there's a lot of high hopes out there that Donald Trump Donald Trump's tax reforms will get pushed through, and on the back of that, the US dollar has been doing the, the dollar basket has been at, at its highest in a number of weeks. Also, whenever we do hear, hear about uh, the European President Mario Draghi's plans or potential plans to kind of taper or any kind of alterations to the bond buying scheme, they're currently, they're currently purchasing 60 billion euros a month of common bonds. Are they going to turn it back to something like 40, or uh, are, are they going to and uh, are they going to turn it back to something like 20 and alter the dates, uh, alter the, the timeline of which they do it? Uh, has yet to be seen, but any any kind of updates from from um, the European Central Bank on that respect are obviously going to be very important to keep an eye out for. So in relation to the to the um, to the euro dollar, it's clearly had a great had a great run. Uh, it's been pushing higher well throughout the year. Some of the economic indicators you know of the eurozone in in 2017 have been have been quite respectable. But we can see here that the market has kind of pulled back uh, from the kind of from the September high, and it's only kind of only can regain maybe say about half of the, of the ground it lost and it's very much kind of it can't really kind of seem to kind of crack the 50 day moving average in at uh 118.47 or or, or uh, 118.50 that that price region there so while we were going to hold on to this level here uh from the august low at 116.62 it's likely that we could see the market hold up but at the same time we will need to break north of that level at 118.50, the 50-day moving average before we can actually be kind of more confident that the kind of upward trend is going to continue. So we need to be in a bit, bit of a kind of a sideways pattern, a bit of a consolidation pattern here after, after coming on the back of the um, after the um, after the kind of decent run it had, which which kind of ran out of steam in September. Notice how during the sell-off here, the um, the MACD, the, the the momentum portion of it was very much in, uh, in negative territory. Then it started to, to um, the negative momentum started to decline quite a bit, and it swung back over to positive territory. But this hasn't really uh, moved moved in it, moved, moved much higher uh, in terms of positive momentum. So it could be an indication that kind of the market is, is a bit kind of lackluster. Isn't isn't, isn't a whole lot. Of, it's just a lot of indecision out there. And looking at at the price action, it's been also in a fairly tight range as well. So it can also be potentially if you do go north of the 50-day moving average at 118.50. We we'll then be looking up towards the, the late September high of the kind of the 120 region, and then of course uh, the high in September itself of 120.92. Any move south of this level here of 116.62 could bring us back down towards 116.13, uh, and then below that down towards 114.79 in, in this price here for the middle of July. Having a look now at the uh, at the pound. Yep, Aussie dollar. I'll happily look at that. So the, the broad trend for for the pound has been fairly positive um, against against the US dollar, but it's kind of um, ever since coming off the uh, the highs in September, I think the the, the situation has uh, has cooled somewhat. So as you so whether this is going to be the move here is just a. Um, the move that we're seeing in here is just a bit of a correction after the kind of stellar uh, move we saw in September, 
oh, and this actually the beginning of something actually a uh, bit more of a turnaround has yet to be seen. But as you can see, that it's been it's been getting support from the 50-day moving average here, which comes into play in around the kind of 131.55 level, and it stopped short here at the 100-day moving average of 130.17. And actually, the 50-day, 100-day moving average actually provided a bit of support in here in late August, early September. So that, that's going to be a key metric to keep an eye on. So while we, we remain north of the 100-day moving average at 130.47, the outlook for cable is going to be is uh, it could be positive. But obviously, we need to a couple of hurdles need to overcome before we can actually be more confident that the kind of wider positive trend is going to continue. So the first kind of hurdle we need to overcome will be in at 133.37, uh, which was uh, which was created on the, um, in the in the middle of the month on the only a couple of Fridays ago. And then beyond that, we were looking up towards 134 and 134.45. And then north, north of that again, the, the September high at 136.59. But should we move south of the 50-day moving average, the next, next level, big level to keep an eye out for will be 129. And then below that in at the 30-day moving average at 128.24. And notice how that this market hasn't actually hasn't traded south of the 30-day moving average since, since August. And it was that kind of major kind of push higher here, just insured. At the cable stayed north of the 20 moving average uh, for, for, for the last set number of months. Have you a look now at Euro Sterling? Euro Sterling, um, as, you, as you saw here, had a terrific run. Uh, had a bit of a quite a decent correction uh, in, in, the month, in the month of both well, August and September. Um, the sell off the correction began in August, it's pushed push it back into September. It's been kind of hanging around um, the the 100 day moving average, which comes into play in around here, as well around the 8940 region here. We just happen to be south of it now, and since our gains seem to be capped at the at the 50 day moving average, which are pretty much at the uh, the 90 cents mark, the um, the 90 pence mark. So it's nice to kind of get, get a break out of that in either direction. It is a bit concerning though that we can see that that broadly speaking the price has been kind of pushing higher from say mid October onwards. But notice how positive momentum has been has been dipping. So in fact the positive momentum is, is putting is uh, declining here, and we're now we're kind of back below the 100 day moving average. Could be an indication that we could we could be kind of looking to uh, to retest the September lows, uh, which which come into place in around this area here, uh, in around. Uh, this level, this, the September low was um, 87.46. So, given that we're now south of the 100-day moving average, it's obviously uh, it's been an important metric the last couple of sessions because active support. We're now south of it, so we could be actually looking to kind of drift lower. It is it, it, it is worth your while keeping an eye on this uh, this portion of the MACD indicator, the momentum portion, because it gives indication of where, where the kind of pressure is coming from. Is it coming from the buy side or the sell side? And broadly speaking, the last few sessions, the, the, the buy side uh, momentum has been in decline. So it could be a sign that the bolts are running out of steam. We could look, we could look to look, move lower to 88.55 and then south of that back down towards uh, 87.38, which is also not too far away from the 20 moving average. But if you do push higher, the first level to watch out for is obviously going to be the 50 day moving average in at, at 90 pence. And then beyond that, we're looking back up towards the 92.26 area and then the 92.97 region, which is basically up around here, uh, which is achieved back in August. Just bring up the Aussie dollar now. So look at, at the long chart here. First thing we can see is that the Aussie dollar when I drop back below the the 100, sorry, the 100, sorry, the 200 week moving average, <clears throat> it's made a few attempts to kind of push up towards, and it hasn't really gotten quite there yet. So that level is going to be a big move, a level, a level to watch out for, uh, if and when we get there at 79.24. Broadly speaking, the push higher that has been in place, well, throughout 20 since, since early 2016, coming up now on two years, is still intact. But this is obviously going to be, be a big hurdle to keep an eye out for. On the upside at 79.24. If you do move lower, to keep that level to keep an eye on for the downside will be the low in October at 77.33. Uh, and I'll just change the, the chart size, bring it to a daily chart, and see what we got. What the daily chart is showing us. 
as I mentioned, so the, the move here in May is still uh, is still pretty is still basically intact. We can see here that we've, we've come off the highs of September. Uh, this is the level I was referred to here. The low the low in October seventy seven thirty three. If we remain north of that, that's gonna that's gonna be uh, that that's that's going to be um kind of gonna be a bullish uh, a bullish sign. Um, Levels to watch out for immediate to the upside. It's going to have to break north of the 50-day moving average, which comes to play just north of 79, and then beyond that we'll be looking towards 80, 80, 80 cents, and then beyond that again looking to the August as uh, the September high rather of uh, of 81, 81, 25. Uh, by and large, I'll, I'll say that, that the outlook for the for the Aussie dollar, the Aussie dollar rather, is uh, is is fairly positive. But obviously, keep in mind the strength of the US dollar. Has is be something to uh, to keep an eye on. So U.S. politics, particularly their, their taxation policy, uh, is is worth paying attention to for the next few sessions. I'll have a look now at the U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen, and then look to wrap up the webinar. Uh, so if you do have any questions, any of the markets that you want me to cover, just feel free to shout them out in the next couple of minutes. Basically, um, well, Mr. Abe's um, snap election um, play. Played off nicely. Uh, Mr. Abe is uh, well. Abenomics is, is, is named after him. Very aggressive monetary policy. Uh, doing kind of anything, anything it takes to actually kind of get the Japanese economy uh, kind of kickstarted. And of course, uh, that that has actually was considerably weakened the Japanese yen. So as you can see here, positive positive major push higher in the dollar versus Japanese yen. It's been in place since September. It's still on the go. It's pushed higher. It's taken out for now a level not seen since July. Notice how as the market was uh, was setting off here, got a bit of support from the 20 moving average in terms of price action. The positive momentum indicator was was, um, was in decline. It actually turned negative here, and now lo and behold, it's it swung higher. So the market has pushed higher to a multi-month high. We swung to positive positive momentum. So it's not, so the buy, the direction and the and the power is clearly with the buyer. So next level to watch out for to the upside and the dollar yen is going to be the July high at 114.49. And then beyond that, looking towards the 115 price price uh, handle, and then beyond that, the the, the March high of 115.50. So these, these are levels to keep an eye on for the uh, for the US dollar about the Japanese yen to the upside. Should it move south, uh, we could get support from, from this price here from the from the kind of one of the highs in July, uh, which comes which is actually the market has gapped north of at 113.57, and then below that in around the 113 mark. And then, as we can see here, the 20 moving average acts as a bit of support uh, before the market at its, at its next leg higher. So, any any kind of deeper tracings you see in the dollar versus Japanese yen may find support in at 111.75. 111 spot 75. What I'll do now is always just going kind to of run down and show you all other items that are on our platform. So I've showed you uh, the, the, uh, the the week ahead. Um, also, keep an eye out. On the, the week ahead so is, is found under the news and analysis section. Now, with the news analysis, all the art, some of the articles that we do get posted to our news site, which of course goes here. But some of the articles that we also do go directly on Insight, and that is actually on the trading platform itself. So you actually must be logged in to actually view those ones. And to get to Insight, click on Market Pulse, second tab down, Insight. What we also update uh, several times throughout the day is the chart form. It's basically taking a snapshot of, of a chart. And we have some, you know, we may have some trend lines or some indicators on the chart, and then a few hundred words to describe um, our, our, our to kind of um, to to kind of voice our opinion uh, of what we think is going on on the chart, and that, that gets updated several times a day under Market Pulse. Click on the third option down chart forum. That's where you'll find chart forum. That gets done several times a day. Also, if you want to have a more detail in terms of economic indicators and what's going on. Click on the market pulse, fourth option down, market calendar, and that'll give you what's going on in terms of economic indicators to to expect. I give you a rundown of both uh, the what what is the forecast, what was the previous reading, and then of course once the actual is out, it'll be it'll be uploaded on time. So I'll give you a rundown of the major of uh, economic indicators to keep an eye on. We got German manufacturing numbers out tomorrow. We have uh, PMI numbers out from the eurozone as a whole. Uh, skimming through the, uh, Wednesday's update, IFO from Germany is going to be going to be quite big. Consumer confidence, sorry, CPI rather from from Australia. If you're looking at the Aussie dollar, obviously keep an eye on that. 
UK GDP half nine on Wednesday morning. As always, at half three for trading oil, we we have um, we have the weekly oil numbers coming out from the um, from the uh, from the United States. Uh, also, keep an eye on we have um, looking here uh, on Thursday. We obviously have the the, bank, the ECB rate meeting at twelve at twelve forty five. The press conference afterwards at half one is difficult to watch out for. When I mentioned earlier on discussing the euro dollar, uh, it's also relevant for the, for all for all for all um, euro crosses, but. The European Central Bank are currently purchasing 60 billion euros of bonds every single month. There's talk of the ECB looking to kind of change their language or maybe hint at um, how they're going to alter their, their policy. So we're not really, not really expecting anything from the actual, from the in terms of interest rate changes, but we could hear an alteration in languages and langu in, in vocabulary and terminology used at the ECB press conference, which is at half 12 on Thursday. And then, of course, uh, on Friday, what to keep an eye out for? Let's see, we have US GDP numbers coming out at one fifth, sorry, half one on Friday. So, and then, of course, we also have the University of, of uh, Michigan consumer sentiment at, at, uh, at three o'clock on Friday. As always, I've seen as you manage to find us and log in on this um, on this webinar, uh, feel free to come to our other join us for other webinars and also in uh, seminars. So under the learn section on our website, under webinars and events, scrolling down here, uh, you will see that on Wednesday, this Wednesday coming up at, at uh, 19.30, 7.30 p.m. Uh, London time, we have a webinar on five reasons to trade the, tr trade the trend. If you happen to be in Liverpool on Thursday and you're at a, and you're at a loose end, uh, we have a, a free uh, seminar um, uh, at, 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 in Liverpool on Thursday night, uh, that is Thursday the 26th of October at 6 p.m. sharp. That is free to, free to attend. If you're in the Liverpool area, feel free to attend. Uh, my colleague uh, Michael Houston uh, and along with a number of other CMC, uh, CMP employees are going to be at that event. And then, after that, as always, we have the 12.15 every single Monday uh, is the, the webinar that, that, that I will be uh, conducting. I uh, appreciate your, your, uh, your, your time for, for tuning in. Uh, if you have any any questions, feel free to contact on, feel free to contact us on Twitter. Um, but that for in terms of my, my updates on every Monday, that is all for myself this week. Thank you for tuning in and good luck.